I've done you a favor. Instead of making you model a low poly base from scratch, costing you hours of work, I've actually done it for you. In the description of this video, there's a link to my Gumroad, where you'll find a download to this exact base for free. Whilst you're at it, feel free to download any of the other models I've uploaded. Oh, and thank you to the two people that did actually end up buying my models. I really appreciate it. Now, I could totally teach you how to model a low poly base from scratch, but that would make this video quite long and boring and... Alright, fine. I'm just too lazy to bother teaching you. You know, there's so many other videos out there probably teaching you all this better than me. So, alright, let's start with the fun stuff. Download the model off of my Gumroad and import the FBX file. Make her whatever height you desire. I recommend you stay within the normal human range. Go to edit mode and select the vertices required to form a shirt. Shift D to duplicate whatever you selected and press P to separate by selection. Now you have two separate objects. This allows you to change the shape of the shirt and make it look more natural. You can always apply a mirror modifier to help you out keeping everything symmetrical. Do the exact same for the pants. Now, just because I'm choosing to design my model like this doesn't mean you have to make an exact replica of mine. Change it up a bit. Customize yours however you like. Just don't add too much detail since it has to remain low poly, where most of the detail is later drawn on. Right, I decided to give mine long socks, and if you're wondering how I shape my clothes, I mainly use Blender Sculpt Tools and Edit Mode for smaller changes. I added shoes too, just make sure you make the surface at the bottom of the shoe flat by selecting all vertices and pressing scale, Z, zero. The hair is a different story. I got a sphere and cut it in half and placed it on top of her head. Unless you're into the bowl cut look, I recommend you extrude the edges on the back and sides and thin out the ends to give it a more natural look. On the hair and all clothes, I added a solidify modifier to add thickness. Once you're finished with modeling, you can mark seams to UV unwrap later. All the red lines you see here are seams. They should be placed where new limbs start, in areas where the topology is tricky, and most importantly, around the eyes and mouth, but more on that later. Unwrap your UVs and adjust the placement if necessary. I like to check if my UVs are unwrapped correctly by creating a color grid and assigning the texture to all objects. Then create a new texture. I set the dimensions to 512 by 512 pixels, since I go for the old game low poly look. Replace the color grid texture with the new texture you just created and start painting. You can use the bucket tool to instantly color an object. I use this to get an overall overview on how I want my model to look like. This works miracles, since I like to just ball and hope it ends up looking good. Also, ignore the eyes and the mouth for now. Leave out those UVs for later, since they get a separate texture. Time for the easy part, texture painting. I swear to you, it cannot get easier than this. All you have to do is select an object, go to texture painting, and draw on it. I'm not here to teach you how to draw, but I wouldn't mind making a video in the future on how I paint in Photoshop. For the model, I added details such as seams, folds in the clothing, shadows on the skin, stars on the shirt, and highlights in the hair. For the eyes, you want to create a new texture with the same color as the skin. I made mine 256 by 256 pixels. Place your face UVs at the top of the texture, making sure there is enough room at the bottom for a second or even third set of eyes or mouths. In my case, I did two sets of eyes and three mouths. Draw the first eyes, making sure you stay within the boundaries of your UVs. Then move the UVs down and paint the second eyes. I imported the texture into Photoshop to copy and paste the eyebrows. Looking back at this, I should have just drawn the eyebrows on the first texture and saved myself the hassle. I... I don't know why I did that to be honest. If you want to edit your textures further in a drawing application, you can use Photoshop. And if you don't have that, use Clip Studio Paint. And if you don't have that, use Critter something, it's free. I mentioned this in my previous video, but I copied La Cruz's node setup to make the eye blinking and the mouth sliders. So you can either copy this, or watch his video, which will be in the description. If you copy my setup, play with these sliders until you're satisfied with the result. Oh, and to see the blinking or mouth movement in action, just turn the value up and down. By the way, at the end, I actually applied the solidify modifier for just the hair and thinned out the ends even more. Once you're done with that, 
Create a human rig using the Rigify add-on. Align the bones to your model and occasionally parent with automatic weights to check if everything is moving properly. Once you're satisfied, select a meta rig and generate the rig. Lastly, once again, parent your model with automatic weights, but this time to the newly generated rig. And boom, you've got movement. Now, you could totally stop here, and if you're a beginner, you probably want to improve all the skills I just talked about first before moving on. But hear me out. A bone specifically created to make the character blink and change the mouth movement is pretty cool. So, go into the rig edit mode. Select the head bone and duplicate it twice. Make sure it's parented to the head bone. Place them next to the eyes and the mouth and name them accordingly. I changed the bone shape by using the one that's assigned to the thigh, since it's an arrow, and rotated, scaled them down a bit, and changed the colors. Now we're gonna assign drivers to the value sliders we created earlier. These drivers will link back to the bones, so when you move the bone down, it should make the model blink or change the mouth. You right-click on the value for the blink, select Add Driver, and Copy My Driver Setup. You can change this number here if you find that the blink happens too fast or too slow, and do the same for the mouth movements. So now, when you move the blink and the mouth bones down, it should actually do something. Lastly, I set a limit location in the Bone Constraints tab to limit how far you can move the bone down. Just copy this and adjust however far you want your bone to be able to move down. That's it, right? Wrong. Let's make the render and the viewport pixelated to give it that old game low poly look. Set the sampling for both the renderer and the viewport to 1. Go to compositing, enable nodes, and copy this setup. Now, it's cool and all to see it in the render, but it would be cooler to be able to see it in the viewport too. So go back to the layout, go up here to your shading, and enable always in the compositor, and boom! You can see what the render would look like in your viewport. Now we're done, right? No! All you still have to do is go to my Gumroad in the description and download this model where you can get the entire blend file, textures, plus the FVX for just 3 euros. I'm joking, that's optional of course. I hope this wasn't too difficult to understand, but if you're struggling on something, just leave a comment and I'll try my best to respond and find a solution. Anyways, enough yapping, I've got a flight to catch soon, and I'm still here writing this damn script.